a people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. And upon them, light has arisen. Have you ever noticed how much time you and I spend noticing other people? <laughs> have you ever noticed that? How much time we spend noticing others? Why, we're always paying attention to what others are thinking, what they're saying, what they're, well, what they're doing. We spend a lot of time noticing others. Most of those others that we notice, why, we are indifferent to what they think, say, or do. Some of them, of course, we are envious of what they think, say, or do. And then there's those others. Those others that, well, that quite literally fascinate us. They fascinate us to the point, well, to the point where, where we want to learn from them. There's something about them. There's something about that intrigues us, that speaks to us. Why? That I like to say that has our name on them. And so we want to learn from them. It's why oftentimes the greatest de definition of discipleship that I've ever come across is disciples are fascinated people who simply want to learn more about another. Disciples are fascinated people who simply want to know more about another. So this past several weeks, I have noticed how much spend time I spend noticing others. And I notice a young man who works at one of our adult care facilities in the memory unit. I notice this young man because, well, he himself has some disabilities, but I notice how incredibly generous and kind and compassionate he is with our elderly people. He helps them get their food. He spends time with them always with a smile on his face. He participates and gets them involved in activities, in the various activities that they try to do to stimulate these elderly people who oftentimes are not very mobile at all. And certainly their memory, no longer there. But I always notice this young man, a smile on his face, a kindness, a compassion, a deep and abiding love for the person right in front of him. I notice him. I want to learn from him. In this past week, I noticed another young boy, probably 10, 12 years of age. And as I was entering into a restaurant, I noticed far in front of me in the door, right going into the restaurant, was, a, was an elderly woman, and she had a walker in front of her, and why she was struggling to get into the door of the restaurant, and all of a sudden, without my even realizing, this young boy of 10 to 12 years old, why he comes flying by me, because he's running as fast as he can run. And what is he running to? He's running to the door to hold it open for the woman. And I'm thinking to myself, I want to learn from him. I want to learn how to run again. <laughs> I want to learn how to be attentive to the fact that there's somebody in front of me who could use a helping hand to hold open a simple door so that she can enter into the restaurant. I learned this past week as I noticed one of our young people preparing for the Sacrament of Confirmation, a junior in high school. And I had the opportunity to interview her and she was, she was incredibly nervous and she was worried and she was, why she was, she was afraid. And what she was afraid of was that she didn't have her service hours done. And she didn't know if she was going to be able to get them done before confirmation. And she was convinced that because of that, she wasn't going to be confirmed. And I noticed the anxiety and the fear and the worry that she had. So as I began to, as I began to visit with her and to hear her story, it amazed me. I said, so tell me, tell me about your life at home, your family. She said, well, I have 
two very young brothers that are, that are very, very young. And my parents, they work incredibly hard, and both of them go to work at 4.30 in the morning. And she said, and it's my job to get my two little brothers up in the morning, to get them fed, and I drive them to school. And then it's my job to pick them up after school and to get them home safely again. And then it's my job, she said, to help my mom as we prepare dinner for that evening. And she's going on and on, and she said, and then I'm going to school, and of course she said, I also work at Culver's. And I'm listening to this young lady, and I said, I think you have your service hours taken care of. <laughs> Don't you? Amazing, isn't it? We just need, well, we need to notice people. Because if we notice them, we'll want to learn from some of them. We'll want to learn what it means to lean into life. To lean into life and to coax it to the point where, where we can bring about and to help bring about its redemption. That's what Jesus does in today's gospel. He preaches about a kingdom that is, well, that is at hand. And he cures diseases and he heals people. And all of a sudden he comes to these fishermen who don't have a clue. But nonetheless, they're doing what they know how to do. And God comes to them in the midst of their everyday lives, of fishing, of tossing nets, and God comes to them right smack dab in that everydayness of their life where they are trying to lean into life to try to coax, hopefully, a catch so that they can provide for their families, no doubt. And God comes to them in the midst of that and he says, follow me. Follow me. And I believe the reason why Peter and Andrew, James and John, were able to say yes, it's because they were fascinated. They were fascinated by this, by this preacher, this prophet, this man that was there standing on the shore that was inviting them to give up their nets and to follow him. And because they were fascinated, they wanted, they wanted to learn from him. They wanted to get to know a little bit more about this other person. And that's what enabled them to become a disciple. So my friends in Christ, today as we gather as a people of faith, as we come to this altar to be fed and nourished by word and sacrament, we need to be mindful of the fact and we need to remember that God comes to us in our ordinary, everyday lives. And he comes to us in incredible ways and he wants us to notice. He wants us to notice other people and how they're leaning into the very gift of life itself and how they're trying to coax out of their lives and the manner in which they're working and playing and trying to do what it is that they know best to do, how they are trying to bring about redemption not only for themselves but for the people around them. We need to pay attention to the fact that God is sending us people constantly who are helping us to learn how to make this world in which we live a better place, making it better for other people, running to hold open doors, smiling at the elderly who don't have any memory left, but treating them with love and respect and dignity, getting up early in the morning and taking care of younger brothers and sending them off to school and doing all those things and juggling life as we know it to be able to, to be able to hopefully experience the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And God comes to us in that ordinary, everyday aspects of our life. And he invites us likewise well, to do the same. Come, follow me, he says. Make a difference. Make life better for other people. And you can quite simply doing it by just simply being yourself. Lean into life. Recognize that even though oftentimes we find ourselves sitting in darkness, a great light has shone, and it has arisen, and it is present in our midst. 
I noticed one other story this past week. Perhaps you noticed it as well. If you watched the evening news a couple of nights ago, it was a story about a dad and his 10-year-old son. And they live in Salt Lake City, Utah. And the dad and the boy, once a month, go out into the streets of Salt Lake City and they find a homeless person. And once they find the homeless person, they invite that homeless person to have lunch with them. Imagine that. And then in sitting down and having lunch with this homeless person, they spend that time hearing their story, listening to them speak, telling their story and who they are, more than just somebody without a home, without a roof, without a meal, but rather a human being, one that is longing for respect and dignity. And I noticed myself as I watched that story on the evening news this past week, thinking to myself, I'd like to learn from those two people. I'd like to learn from that dad and his 10-year-old son who dared to take a risk every month and to go and to find a homeless person on the street and invite them to sit down for a meal. My friends, that's what it means for you and I to be a disciple, to say yes to the invitation to come follow me. And chances are we won't abandon our nets, we won't give up our family life as those first disciples did, but, but you and I will learn from the people that we notice who make truly a difference and this place a better place. And in learning from them, we will choose likewise to say yes, and we will lean into life, and we will coax forth redemption because we believe, we believe that a light has arisen.